Professor Wood stands out for his instrumental efforts in building the college and department of ECE into some of the best in the country, and has been the recipient of the Mortar Board Professor of the Year, UCSB Academic Senate Distinguished Teaching Award, and the UCSB Affiliate Professor of the Year Award. Roger, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. You're welcome. You are one of the founders of the Electrical Engineering Department, now ECE, and the College of Engineering. What were the biggest challenges in establishing engineering here at ECSB? Well, we started out with very little. I, I was here for the, I missed the first graduating class. Uh, I was here for the first master's exam. I was here for the first PhD exam. I was on them, in fact, both, uh, both committees. But uh, the biggest thing is the arts and letters folks thought that, that was, this was going to be a, uh, a small liberal arts school and they didn't like the notion of engineering coming at all. So we caught a lot of grief from them and uh, the physics and math departments loved us on the one hand because uh, we sent a lot of students to take their classes so that they could get more, more money that way, you know. But uh, they didn't like the competition particularly. So it was, it was interesting and uh, uh, we were in the arts building, strange as that may seem, uh, because it wasn't just fine arts, it was gra the, all the other practical arts, m machinery, uh, whatever, audiovisual, all of that. You were the faculty advisor and served on and chaired numerous PhD and MS committees. Do you know for how many students? No, I don't. I lost count, and particularly on the master's students, I have no idea. That's astronomical. And you must have many success stories to share. Yes, I do. One that I, I want to share with Dan O. as soon as I see him is I was just recently listening to some show on PBS. It may have been the news hour. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But anyhow, they were talking about some technical thing and they called for a, a, another technical opinion, expert witness. And uh, so we'll turn to uh, Dr. Willie Chu of IBM. And I looked, I said, Willie Chu? And I looked and said, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my Willie Chu, that's our graduate. And, uh, and it says, Willie, you know, IBM Research Vice President. <laughs> so that's a, that's a success story, I think. And uh, uh, Itzik Barpel, who's done, made great contributions to the, to the campus and payback for what he got, he did essentially in 1970 maybe, somewhere along that line, did a, what is an early equivalent to the Prius, uh, a DC gas, a gasoline uh, electric hybrid. And uh, he was top man in Westinghouse for them. He's, he's retired at least once <laughs> and uh, he's been very active in support of, of uh, ECE. Can you tell us about the role you play in providing engineers in local industry and the opportunity to pursue graduate students Via the off-campus studies program. Yes, the 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 local students, the right in close. Uh, we found a way to get that, let them come to the to the campus to take their classes, and so that was uh, very very easy and a very uh, powerful way. When we started first started, we did not really have enough students from our first graduating class to, to populate the, uh, uh, properly populate the graduate classes. And so we were, and we did, we're not, you know, you, you got some starting students there, but when you're a brand new uh, uh, program, brand new department, it, it's not as easy to recruit. And uh, shall we wait here? Well, to continue, uh, many of the local students could, uh, we just allowed them to take any load they want. If they only want to take one course, they could take one course. If they uh, want to take two, they could take two. And probably when we first started out, half the class was uh, students from local uh, uh, companies, GM, uh, uh, Raytheon, EG&G, 
uh, applied magnetics, whatever. There was, and that was before that we, for a while we were, this was called the Silicon Coast because of all the software and whatever, hardware and software uh, thing, companies that had been created from students that had come here. The biggest, the, the place where the off, true off campus was the most successful was we sent courses uh, via TV down to Point Magoo. And we sent it up to Vandenberg, but it never hit quite as well there. And then uh, one, one summer, somebody stole the transmitter from <laughs> the Air Force <laughs> uh, tower up on uh, Broadcast Peak. And so that was the end of the, of the Vandenberg side of it. But uh, we had a lot of students from uh, uh, Ventura that would take their whole program uh, remotely. Health, mostly, uh, not physical health and, and mental health, sanity. I mean, getting the tensions off any sort of sports. Noontime basketball, there was a faculty staff game at noon and I played regularly there. Uh, that, that's where I ended up not, I'm no, no longer playing as I was a little, I, was, I played uh, intramurals, intramural basketball. Uh, when I was 70, and uh, we, the day after, the Wednesday after a Tuesday night game, uh, I was playing the noontime game and chasing a man on a fast break, and he wasn't my man, uh, but I was the only one that had a chance to, to catch up with him, and I wasn't, and I dug down a little deeper and felt the, my, my hamstring. <laughs> Tear. And that's been the end of, <laughs> of basketball, which is too bad. I, I really loved it. But it's, uh, it's the get together it was the, the contact between students, our students, other students. Uh, the whole thing was, uh, uh, was very uh, uh, meaningful and, and powerful. And the, uh, what the, the undergrads, when we, our first team was a uh, faculty staff football team, and what the undergrads didn't realize it, is that most, I was the only faculty member, the rest were uh, TAs and RAs and things like this. And uh, they challenged us to a game and uh, we, uh, we absolutely stomped them uh, uh, in a picnic game because he was good. Our quarterback had led Santa Monica uh, City College to the state uh, uh, championship. He could throw the football 70 yards and was the coolest guy I've ever blocked for. So uh, it, uh, it, was, it, it was good interactions and, and a lot of students, undergrads and grads, Jolly Rogers, anybody that wanted to play could play and we played uh, flag football until the bruises didn't heal from one week to the next. Yeah, I always wondered why all pro linemen would quit. They're all pro, they've been all pro for eight years, and they quit. And I think I know why. 